Welcome, this is a video tutorial from Andrew Klein where we're going to take a look at sculpting fabric, uh, specifically using ZBrush version 3.1. Now, we're going to take a look very specifically first at a couple of ways in which fabric is uh, responsive to the wearer. It can be bunched, uh, it can be pulled, or it can hang from parts of the wearer's body. Uh, and once we understand those different directional uh, movements that can happen to the fabric, we'll have a little bit of great understanding how we can start to use our brushes to pull some of that fabric around. Now, once we get a look through that, we're going to come in and into ZBrush specifically, look at the different tools that we can use to make our sculpt happen. Now, first of all, let's take a look at one of the first manipulations that uh, you'll see with fabric, and that is hanging. Um, hanging fabric comes from, uh, obviously, an overhang on the body. Uh, that allows the fabric to respond to gravity and pull down. Uh, as a result, uh, what you usually get is very linear lines going straight down and again following that force, which is gravity. However, in some cases, you get lines that are more of a U-shape. And this U-shaped line is actually partly responsive to gravity, but also somewhat responsive to the force of bunching. Now, bunching fabric is fabric which is kind of pulled into a very specific part of the body. And here the fabric is going to be kind of pulled in radially. Uh, we see instead of it going mostly straight down or, or following a U-shape, uh, we're going to have more of a radial motion that happens in. Uh, a third version of uh, manipulation that can happen to fabric is uh, a specific force or pull in the fabric. Um, you know, here we see an image of a t-shirt just being pulled, and you'll notice the fabric is going to very linearly follow that direction. Well, onto an actual 3D model and away from these photos, let's take a look at some of the ways that this is going to be responsive. Uh, here you see on the shorts of this 3D model that the fabric is going to hang down from the waistband. Here, where the character has a larger stomach, uh, you're notice that force is going to be pulling it outwards. Uh, thus, as a result, the waves of the fabric are going to stretch in that direction. Finally, you can have bunch on your model as well. And here we see actually a rear shot of this character's pants. Uh, all the fabric is kind of being bunched into this area. Uh, and again, we're going to notice a radial pattern as a result of that. Uh, finally, here's just a look at the character as a whole, and you can see all of those examples kind of coming together. Well, next, in addition to how the fabric is moving, uh, we have to understand what type of fabric is it that is uh, making up our garment. Uh, now, first of all, let's take an example look at uh, silk. Uh, silk is a very, very thin fabric, and as a result, you're going to get a lot more individual waves in the fabric. The walls are going to be a lot sharper, uh, and you're going to have a much um, more steep profile to each individual wave. Uh, contrast that with a fabric like burlap, for example, uh, which is a much thicker, denser weave of fabric. Uh, you're not going to have nearly as many waves of fabric, and you are going to uh, notice uh, much smaller waves as a whole, much rounder profiles. Uh, and so when examining your character to figure out exactly what type of uh, fabric patterns you need to sculpt, this is another example of things that you should be looking at. So the question then becomes, how do we get this idea into our sculpt in ZBrush? Well, I have a shirt here that I've started off, and the polygon count is about uh, 1,000 polys right now. Uh, I'm going to go into the tool palette and into the geometry subpalette, where I'm going to hit divide a couple of times, taking this up to six divisions and just under a million polys. Well, next up, looking at this, I'm going to try and get the clay brush out. The clay brush is right here in the brush palette. And starting off with a relatively big brush size, I'm going to start to bring in a couple of waves onto the fabric. Now, I probably do a lot of these right now, but I want to keep this relatively simple so we're only looking at a few for this demo. I'm just going to kind of do this one side, pulling uh, the fabric up as a force towards the pectoral muscle a little bit of bunching here in the armpit, pulling that force in towards the belly. We're kind of looking at how the shirt is extending the form outwards. 
And once I've got a couple of these fairly large brush strokes, I'm going to come in with maybe a couple smaller ones. So I've got different size uh, constructions here in the fabric. Now, this has a relatively round profile and it really won't do as a whole. And that's not going to do it uh, if we're kind of looking at this and trying to really tweak out those very specifics. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go back to a larger size and I'm going to hold down shift which will switch my cursor to be blue. And I'm actually going to start to smooth out some of this. If there's a little bit of um, you know, bubbliness to it, I'll try and smooth some of it down so it's a little bit more simple looking. And so it feels a little bit more smooth as a whole. And that's going to help start this out. My next step, however, is I want to get um, some of that really tight pinching on this so that the fabric pulls together a little bit and as we saw it kind of widens out a little bit towards the area of the force. So I'm going to go into the pinch brush and set my stroke to freehand. Now pinching alone, if I turn on the poly frame, you'll see here, actually just pulls this together and that is way stronger than I need. So I'm going to turn down the intensity of this quite a ways. I'll turn on the poly frame again here and you'll see I don't really have nearly as much pinching as I kind of brush over it this time. But in the pinch brush, I'm going to enable this brush modifier. It's currently at a value of 54. I'm going to turn it up to about 100. Now the brush modifier is going to add detail coming outwards as I pinch. So it kind of sculpts like the clay brush and pinches at the same time, allowing me to kind of pull together some detail on top of this. And you can see it kind of really brings together that form. And I'm going to go kind of softly on this, not pinching too hard to that direction. Some of it's going to taper a little bit more as well. I might want to get some of that happening. The problem I still feel with this is that even after pinching, you get a pretty rounded profile still. And what I like to do from there is go in to the flatten brush. Now with the flatten brush, I'm going to kind of open up the size a little bit. And I'm going to try and flatten down on the top of these brush strokes. Which gives you, as you can see, I'm starting to develop a sharper profile from this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten on the top and then I'm going to hold down shift and kind of smooth on the bottom, which kind of gives you the sense of gravity pulling down a little bit on these elements. And I'm going to flatten into some of these ends as well. Maybe I can start to branch some of this out. And there we go. Do a little bit of flattening on the top here. And this is a really transformative brush for doing fabric. It takes um, from a very simple perspective and really kind of pushes it very, very far to the point that you usually need. And this can be done with all kinds of fabric directional movements uh, for your hanging fabric for your bunching fabric and for your, your forced fabric as well. I'm going to flatten out the top of that a little bit. Finally, I, if I feel I want a little bit more hanging, I might take the move brush, open it up to a pretty big size, and start to pull some of these down in the middle so they get a little bit of a hang to them. So I hope you enjoyed this look. Um, and if you have any more tutorial needs, please visit andrewkline.net. Thank you.